So Margaret, tell me what happened when you were admitted to hospital in uh, December last year? Um, I was ambulance took me to the, the accident emergency bit and then from there I put into the, at the assessment place and then from there up to the ward where I was examined and all that. Okay. And what happened when you were discharged from hospital? Well, I was a bit breathless. And I asked in the ward if I could, uh, if I could get a nebulizer, because of quite a few patients in that ward that noticed that I was having my problem. And I asked the sister, and she says, "I'll get you one." Then she came back. She says, "Oh, she says, hey, I'll need to see a doctor first. So I never got it. Okay. And then I get released. And when I came home, I was still I was started breathing really bad." And I f Dr. Hartman came up okay. and he told me that I was full of fluid. Okay. Put me on my city, my fruzamide, two tablets, and it fair brought it down. Good. And did anybody ask you about what medicines you were on when you went into hospital? Well, I always take them in with me, and usually they, they take them off me. And they looked through them, so they must have done that. I just can't remember. And did anybody tell you about any medicines that they were changing for you when you were in hospital? Mm, I just can't remember that, eh, Rachel? Okay. And did they tell you about what medicines you were going home with when you were discharged and why you were on? Well, as far as I was concerned, I was going home with what I brought in. Right. And maybe a couple less. Okay. And when... You said that um, Dr. Hardman phoned you to talk about the changes to your medicine when you were discharged from hospital. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was important that the practice phoned you to tell you about those oh, changes? Oh, Dr. Hardman came up himself anyway. Okay. To uh, talk about their medication. And just explain. And explain the why they'd been changed in that. And do you think that was something that you think patients would find quite useful in general, or was it. Oh, no, I did find it. Because when you're in hospital, I mean, you're not really, it's good in one ear and out the other, as you might say. You're listening, but it's no uh, sinking in, but it's when your own doctor's talking to you, you know, it's better. It explain, explains it better anyway. when you're in hospital, you don't know the doctor. Uh -huh. well. When you're in hospital, you don't know the doctor. And you see that many doctors that come to your bed. Uh, whereas when you're your own GP, you can talk to your own GP and you know he's listening to you and you can listen to him. You know, he knows your history and everything. And you've got confidence there. And do you think the best time for you to be told about changes in your medicines is when you're back home rather than in hospital? Uh, I think so, uh -huh. okay. And um do you think when Dr Harmon phoned you to tell you about the changes to your medicines that that prevented you going back into hospital again? Uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. aye, aye, definitely. Just because it, when he phoned, he realised that you were a bit out of breath mm -hmm. and, and the medicines that they had stopped in hospital had possibly made that worse. Worse, uh -huh. yeah. and plus the fact, I mean, that I had been getting examined, you know, at the back and that, and... There didn't seem to be any fluid there at the time. It was just uh, as the time went on. I felt it myself, you know, that I was finding it difficult to walk from the bed to the bathroom and back again. So, Margaret, when Dr. Hardman phoned to tell you about the changes that had been made to your medication and the medications that had been stopped when you were in hospital, what did you say to Dr. Hardman? I was feeling very breathless. And I didn't know if I mean, the tablets or anything being changed. If I did, I couldn't remember. And he, then Dr. Harbin he came up to see for himself. And it was, uh, he said, you're, you're very breathless. I said, I said, I've been like that since I came home. So he examined me and he, he found that I had a fluid. And he put me back onto my tablets again. Okay. And after that, it was 
That was great. Everything just went back to normal again. Um, just to amplify that um, our practice has been involved in the Scottish pa Patient Safety Programme over the last couple of years, and Margaret's story is something that we come across relatively uh, frequently um, in that in Margaret's particular episode she'd had several hospital admissions over a short period of time um, and the hospital admission that we're talking about in particularly she'd been in having had a hematemesis um, on discharge she had many of her medications stopped she was unsure of what had been stopped and certainly as a practice we weren't sure what had been stopped until about a week after discharge um, and as we do um, in the Medicines Reconciliation, we contact the, the patient, individual patient uh, and at that time Margaret said that she was much more breathless and had developed uh, more swelling of her legs um, and in Margaret's particular case I said that I would come and visit her and reassess the situation. Um, we then discovered that she'd had both her digoxin and afrizomide stopped um, but clinically she had pulmonary edema and needed to restart this medication. Um, we did that and as Margaret said herself, she improved fairly quickly. So I'm fairly convinced that the actions that were taken over that particular episode um, managed to keep Margaret out of hospital um, and um, saved her um, you know, more distress and discomfort and more potential contacts that uh, were, would not have a, a good end result. So.